Gloucestershire stay top of Group A as they continued along the road to Lords with a third win from four games in the Royal London One Day Cup, defeating Leicestershire by seven wickets on a rain-affected day in Bristol. Morning rain initially reduced this game to 45 overs per side and the home team made hay after winning the toss once Niall O'Brien edged David Payne's second ball behind to go for a duck. Payne and Gareth Roderick combined again in the bowler's second over to remove Angus Robson for 13 as the home side again started well. Payne was the catalyst of this latest success. It was three and three overs for the left armour when he thanked Matt Boyce for letting him bowl him. One ball into his fourth over, Payne had figures of four for 14 after Dan Redfern played on to leave with his team in a mess on 31 for four. Leicestershire had defended 142 to beat Essex last time out, so this game was not over yet. And with the rain starting to fall, Greg Smith pushed the total along to 64 for one when the players went off. Back on after 20 overs were lost, Shiv Thakur was out to the first ball after the rain break, nicking off to Benny Howell on 11. Leicestershire had been left with 10 overs to go for broke. The rain break certainly not working in their favour. Scott Styris was missed behind the stumps. And he tried to take advantage by sweeping the unlucky bowler, Jack Taylor, for the first six of the game. Aiming for another one with only 20 balls of the innings remaining, the Kiwi hold out to Ian Cobain off Craig Miles to go for 29. Tom Wells was then bowled by Taylor for three, with a total on 115 for seven, with two overs left. In the last of the 25, Jiganake chipped Taylor out to Cobain at long on, leaving it to the opener Smith to finish the innings off. He hit the next ball for four and then followed that up with this maximum, which took him to a 50 off 72 balls, a not containing five fours. And he became left-handed again to hit the next delivery for another boundary to end on 55. Made out of his sides 136 for 8. Payne finishing with 4 for 23 from his 6 overs. Duckworth and Lewis seem to have given the hosts the better deal and they were left to chase down 131 from their 25 overs and with nicer conditions to bat in as well. Michael Klinger and Hamish Marshall got Gloucestershire off to just the start they wanted as they look for a victory which would keep them top of Group A and give them every chance of making it into the quarter-finals. These two openers knocked off 46 of the runs in eight overs. The Foxes needed wickets to slow things down and Nake had Marshall stumped for 22 with 85 more runs wanted. Redfern then gave his side a small chance of a win by first bowling Chris Dent for seven. And then, just two balls later, having Will Tavare caught at mid-wicket by Robson to leave the home side on 59 for three. 72 more needed from 12 overs. Anthony Ireland, who'd produced a stunning spell to help his side defeat Essex in Chelmsford last week, had no luck on his return to Bristol, where he played his cricket for Gloucestershire for four seasons from 2007. Twice Will Gidman edged him to the boundary. Other shots from Gidman and Klinger did come off the middle of their bats, however, as they soon had the target down to something very gettable. Klinger will be delighted with the way his side has started this competition. They took the road to Lords year after year after year in this format back in the late 90s and early noughties, and they may be on their way again after Klinger completed his 50 of 63 balls. They won this match comfortably enough, Gidman pulling Charlie Shrek to the rope to finish the match off with 13 balls remaining on a day where very little went Leicestershire's way. Gidman finished on 39 from 30 while Klinger made 55. It meant a victory by seven wickets, a win which keeps Gloucestershire just where they want to be halfway through the group games. A win under lights on Friday against fellow High Flyers Essex in Chelmsford will go a long way to confirming a place in the last eight. Leicestershire have no time to reflect as they headed off to Southampton for a day-night match with Hampshire on Wednesday.